little case study for you guys. Had an athlete come in this week. Early 30s, triathlete, marathoner, ultra marathoner, super fit guy, really good athlete. Uh, and then also strength trained two or three times a week, snatch, clean and jerk, relatively heavy squats, back squat, front squat, deadlifts, all these things. We're dealing with some right patellar tendinopathy type stuff that's come on, on and off throughout his career. Also, left knee pain, has a surgical history in the left knee, lateral joint line pain, medial joint line pain now, and feels you know, the joint feels full, so there's a little bit of swelling there. Ortho testing, all clear as far as I could tell, you, you know, as best as that stuff can do. It doesn't seem like he's extremely sensitive in the joint line of palpation. All the ligamentous testing seemed to be negative um, and hadn't had any of this pain over the course of the past eight months or so. Had been feeling really, really good. But then the last two months, after I kind of dug into his history a little bit, his training load kind of concentrated and it increased. He started he started running much longer uh, distances. His mileage increased dramatically, um, kept the weight room frequency relatively the same, and then you know added things like hills and intervals, and it was just doing a lot more stuff in the past two months, which we talk about acute training load versus chronic training load, and sometimes getting those acute spikes can, and can cause issues. So I think that's what maybe we were dealing with. Um, the weights don't actually cause any of the symptoms. So the heavy squatting or, or any of that stuff doesn't necessarily recreate the familiar symptoms. It's all during the running. But we, we certainly can't ignore the weights adding to the stress load. So I just advised him, as far as the snatch and clean and jerk, to stick with the power variations of the movements to decrease the compressive loading of the full squats just to give him a little bit more to give with with running as we work back into graded exposure they are also recommended uh we do like the no feet variations of the of those movements as well to decrease the the dynamic loading uh, and then we added some tempo split squats some tempo rear foot elevated rdls which i like because the rear foot elevation kind of like leverages you over the top of the front leg and so we go relatively heavy with those like two three second tempo in both directions and then the big thing is going to be about grading his exposure back into running. So right now, he can run about a mile and a half before he's at a five out of 10 pain, which is enough pain to make him apprehensive. So that was his, we said, that's your ceiling. You can't go any higher than that as far as discomfort. But if you can go back and run two miles and before you get to a five out of 10, that's an improvement. So it's not that we need to be symptom free immediately, it's that we can layer on more work with the same amount of symptoms and the expectation that the symptoms trickle away. So slowly start to, to grade the exposure back to running with that ceiling, no higher than five out of 10. That's where you cut it off. Let your symptoms die back down completely within 24 to 48 hours, and then we'll dose it again with maybe some intervals or, or another steady state. And then get your other cardio work from low impact implements like bike, uh, rower, elliptical, stuff like that, swimming, just for the time being as we, as we gain load tolerance back into running and then we've got this the strength training you know working for us too so just a little case study thought it was interesting i'll share more of these uh in the future thanks guys